tonight. Um, you know, in two parts, you know, maybe this first one won't take a terribly long time. We only are going to be examining four characters, not five. And when I say a party examination for purposes of what we're doing tonight, I don't mean the, the big uh, workshop with the, the color-coded matching and, um, you know, laying out the stats and things along those lines. Um, we'll make notes similar. But really what I want to do is I, I want to see who our party is as the conglomeration of, you know, s some skills or, um, you know, the personality and the purpose. Uh, what is the purpose of the party? And that's important because if we want to present content that is relevant to our party as DMs, then it helps to understand who the characters are and what drives them. That's where a cursory examination like what we're doing here is it's really going to shine. And then in our next part, I'm going to open up MS Paint. You know what we're going to do? We're going to kind of do a little, you know, fly by the seat of our pants dungeon craft. Hey, well, there you go. Uh, so Norton gets 100 EXP so he can draw from the deck two more times and it won't cost him anything. Um, Diadems, if you're out there, uh, could you give Norton the Knoll 100 EXP? All right, so here's uh, here's our four characters. You know what? We haven't uh, we haven't named our female Lightfoot halfling totem warrior barbarian, who is an urban bounty hunter. Uh, we haven't named her yet, so we'll want to make sure that we do that. But let's let's start at the beginning. the The theme of the characters. We're characters with uncommon backgrounds. And so we didn't use the player's handbook, or at least not until we were prompted to do so, by the Sword Coast Adventures Guide with this Urban Bounty Hunter background. Where it gave you a custom uh, background feature, and you know, some equipment and such, but it said for the personality traits and, and those roles, refer to the criminal background in the player's handbook. She's a what? Uh, this the character we made last night. Pardon me, a female light foot halfling barbarian, a totem warrior barbarian, who is an urban bounty hunter. So she tracks down criminals who've escaped the justice system and brings them back, so that they can, um, you know, have their day in court. Or people who skip out on their uh, on their bonds. Uh, hunting, but maybe with a different purpose, Norton. So I don't think she's necessarily going to be competition for you. DMs are saying yes. By the way, DMs is sitting pretty as the uh, as the the stream boss. What a mighty throne it is, too. So let's go back to uh, Zavadoth here. He was the first character we made, um, a human, fey tome warlock. And he had the Haunted One background. The Haunted One background is out of Curse of Strahd. And it's just that. Something tragic happened in your past that leaves you uh, kind of like a monster hunter. Like, you know, you have this, this shadow of your past that continually chases you and, and haunts you. And, and, you know, even makes you a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um... What sent Zavadoth down this path is that a creature of some kind, or a person, 
killed everyone in his group except him. And so his haunted one is, like, his aspect is a manifestation of survivor's guilt in some way. Norton got less smart. <laughs> But hey, because you can draw one more card, uh, you get 50 more experience points, so you can draw a card for free, quote-unquote. Oh. <sighs> that was a good stretch, everyone. Uh, and so we were discussing uh, before what... You know, what could the monster be? What happened? Um, you know, so he doesn't he doesn't uh, envy the dead. He doesn't eat, cherish the dead. Uh, the dead are that. They're dead. They're, they're rotting. They're going to go and be recycled by nature or whatever. Um, though there is a, a glimmer of hope with the character. He's not completely pessimistic. I have a child to protect. I must make the world a safer place for him or her. After this, we have our female rock gnome college of lore bard archaeologist. Who wears, uh, she wears and is known for a, uh, a very fancy medallion around her neck that she found somewhere. And it's since become her, her calling card. Um, you know, something, her great work, her great project. Um, she's rather antisocial. I mean, as a bard, she has a high charisma, but she doesn't really choose to use it. Um, and so she loves digging around in the dirt and going down trapped corridors and all of this other stuff um, more than interacting with others. Then we have uh, Denderaval Cartwright, our dwarf named Tiefling, who favors his human side, hence our more human last name, uh, Cleric of Nature, who's an anthropologist, so he studies cultures. I prefer the company of those who aren't like me, including people of other races, so he's, he's very much social. He's more social than our bard is. I would rather observe than metal. Uh, power, common people crave strong leadership, and I do my utmost to provide it. Ever since I was a child, I've heard stories about a lost city. I aim to find it, learn its secrets, and earn my place in the history books. And lastly, I can't sleep except in total darkness. That's a, that's the flaw. Something Something happened somewhere to cause this to manifest as a phobia. That deck pull isn't going to go well for the tavern folks. Starts tossing bottles at patrons. Why? What did you shift from and what did you shift to? Then lastly, we have our... Uh, the one that I mentioned to you, our, uh, our totem warrior barbarian who's a bounty hunter. The best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. She wants a challenge. The first thing I do in a new place is note the locations of everything valuable or where such things could be hidden. Redemption, the spark of good is in everyone. Someone I love died because of a mistake I made that will never happen again. And if there's a plan, I'll forget it. If I don't forget it, I'll ignore it. So she's the fly by the seat of her pants style. She trusts her instincts. Hey, Fluffy, welcome. Ah, true good. Well, I don't know if I, I don't know if Dark Wolf was true good. True good is its own it's its own alignment. <laughs> yep. Uh, hey, uh, and so Fluffy Sheep, we have uh, Norton the Knoll back with us. Isn't that nice? <laughs> 
<laughs> and moving in with the uh, with the gnuzzle for the gnome or for the gnole. <laughs> oh gosh, I love it. I love it. All right, so here we have Zavadoth. Boer, or Boder, B-O-E, Boder. Male, human, warlock, fey, patron, tome pact. Haunted one. Of the options, that was number one, which is the Survivor's Guild. Neutral, evil, male, human, warlock. This is an exercise I like doing with the characters. If you can summarize who they are currently into a fun fact or a couple fun facts in a sentence or two, what would they be? And not all the facts are fun, by the way. If you want to call it something else, I totally understand. So our fun fact for this character... In fact, let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, let, so let's make something... That was... Left Alive... By an enemy of his patron who pressed him into, uh, let's see, we'll roll percentile, 97, uh, so normally it'd be a multi-class, but if we just go 50-50 how we normally do, uh, then it would be 1 to 50 is female, 51 to 100 would be uh, would be male. Was left alive by an enemy of his patron who pressed him into his service in order to exact, pardon me, revenge and rid the patron of an annoyance. And something else. What's one more thing that we can put together here? I have a child I have to protect. Is a... Stone Cold Killer. Or will... Torture others for information but absolutely adores children and their innocence quote do as I say not as I do Rem Doggington, hello, welcome. Good evening. And Enchanter Kari is here too. Well then, welcome aboard. We're just getting started. Uh, I, ha I had a bit of a soapbox moment earlier. <laughs> nothing bad, nothing bad. I had a bit of a soapbox moment earlier, and uh, now we're getting into the workshop uh, mood. By ex by looking at our, our party makeup, right? If we're pretending to be DMs, we want to design a dungeon. Well, let's understand what the party's bringing into the dungeon Whatever it'll end up being. I'm confused. So an enemy of his patron? No, no. Um, so with his background, his haunted one number one means he, he was the only one of his group that was left alive. 
Um, and so this the the story, at least as it's playing out in my head, is uh, for some reason maybe it's even to leave a, a message uh, that uh, since he's a Fey Pact, maybe our maybe our naturalist, our Zavadoth. I think we were discussing that he was some kind of like a botanist. Uh, he has knowledge nature. Um, you know, he was in the woods with a, a like a research team. Uh, something came along and murdered all of them except him, left him alive. And since this happened on the, the on this arch uh, this uh, archfey's you know front doorstep, the archfey kind of swooped in and talked with Zavadoth here. And promised great power in exchange for service. And oh, by the way, you want revenge on that thing that just came through here? Please. I will empower you to do so. That's what I was trying to get across. So I, I can see where that's confusing. You know what? And so maybe maybe I am a little bit more tired and, and uh, discombobulated than I had thought or even that I had hoped. Yeah, no, I understand, King. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It, it's been, uh, it, it's just been kind of an off, an off day. But yes, yeah, so he was left alive by an enemy of his patron. Uh, or however, however we amend it, I'm going to verbally amend it, and I can go back and and uh, and do it. Uh, well, I wish, King. I really wanted to try and take a nap earlier today. Um, and for various reasons that didn't end up happening. So I, I, I just don't have a lot of sleep. I had a very, um, I had a very strong sentimental moment, uh, after I got home today. Uh, I had, uh, I had a, um, a DVD in the mail that was a, uh, a preservation of an old VHS, uh, cassette, um, from my father, uh, who I miss very dearly, um, and uh, and so just kind of facing the facing your past and and the memories, uh, good or you know even now in retrospect things that might sting or just you know I wouldn't be here with you all if it wasn't for him. And so knowing that you know here I am prepping for a, a stream, and um, and you know he's effectively in here looking at me. Uh, with the various contents that uh, were listed that was on that uh, video cassette. Um, you know, one of them was a, was a trip to Disney World. Heck, another one was a trip to Cedar Point, which is in my current now back, you know, backyard, effectively. And um, it, it just caused a lot of reflection. Um, you know, not, not in, a, in a bad way, but in a way that it does sting. You know, as Norton and Ole saying, like, these are battle wounds. You know, they'll go away soon, but, you know, wear them with pride. Um, you know, I haven't got... I, I didn't watch it because if I if I watched that DVD, I don't think I would have broadcast tonight. In fact, I don't know. Maybe I should reconsider. Uh, <laughs> I can see myself in the camera, and I look absolutely bleary. Uh, and my language is atrocious right now. Oh, thank you, Enchanter Kari. Yeah, Rem Doggington, I, I appreciate it. Um, I really, I, I still really do want to be here with you all. I don't, I don't know if I should. Um, but, uh, you know, just to, to at least say hi, to stop in, and, um, I'm getting, <laughs> Mike Myers was the character I was trying to think of. With his uh, with his character uh, from Saturday Night Live, the uh, who hosted the, the coffee talk, <laughs> you know where you like I'm getting all of a clamp. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The uh, internal combustion engine is neither internal nor combustion. Hey, trust a flump. Welcome. We have uh, trust a. You came in at a very interesting time. We have some raucous saloon music going on. Your host is being like a, a big old like fluffy ball of sentiment, uh, and uh, <laughs> and my my uh, grasp on the uh, on the English language is uh, tenuous right now apparently. And uh, and hey Jedi Crusader, <laughs> well welcome welcome. I hope you two saw that I I had all the minis sorted out 
before going live. That was one of my goals tonight to do. Use my computer's power supply? Oh no. Feel like I've let someone down big time who went out of their way to include me? Oh no. Is everything okay? Like, there wasn't a fire or anything, was there? Uh, well, f uh, trust a flump. Have a, a seat? I don't know. Do you ever actually sit down or you just kind of hover? I guess that means you could use any public restroom you wanted to. OP, uh, sometime between now and when I come up to try and think of something, uh, wait, sometime between now and when I come up, try and think of something from St. Louis you'd like to have, either for yourself or for the shop. Hmm. So some kind of, uh, like, um, a souvenir or a knickknack, OP? Flumps cannot sit, <laughs> says King. A fl flump is a verb, and it is the only thing flumps can do. So they can flump a seat, but they can't sit. <laughs> no, no fire, but I've only just now managed to procure a temporary replacement. I missed the game entirely. Uh, well, hopefully you were able to, uh, to send out, you know, communiques to uh, your DM uh, and or fellow players. And, uh, you know, look, these things happen. Um, I know how much you want to play D&D. &D. I mean, I can't suspect that you just wanted to bail. Um, so I, I'm sorry to hear that happen, Jedi. Oh, well, actually, yeah. There's the person to talk to, right? All right, souvenir knickknack. Uh, I will. Um, I will. Uh, I'll see if there's anything down that way. That uh, that would be really fun. Maybe uh, maybe something I can end up using on the channel here. Thank you for offering. Uh, also, OP. I I greatly appreciate that. All right, so now we have uh, Fistus Mel uh, Melodia. Lawful good, female, rock, gnome, bard, college of lore. Archaeologist. Whose signature like item is an uh, an amulet or a, a pendant of some kind? That's no, that's what number five is. So now let's give her a fun fact or two. I hope to bring prestige to a museum. So this bond is manifesting something in the world. Um, she is greedy, but you know, so she ultimately does. Uh. You know, she'll help society out, but she wants to make sure that, that things are done formally and, you know, that are taken care of for her work. I'm happier in a dusty old uh, tomb than I am in the centers of civilization. Traps will make me nervous. Idiots who trigger traps make me nervous. I have no time for friends or family. I spend every waking moment thinking about and preparing for my next expedition. So how about something like this? Um, she is one of... Let's find out. She is one of three other siblings in a ruckus gnome family. And has always 
been the quiet introvert who studied as a way to escape. Now the uh, now a trusted procurer of antiquities at a prominent museum She is expecting much fame and fortune from this current adventure. Being the capstone of her career. Let's all have a great rest of our day and enjoy the fact that never to pull our harshness. Hey, hopefully you can get that. Uh, uh, hopefully you can get that piece. So you want to do a first dibs in uh, Storm King Sunder? We can certainly do that. Uh, F Fluffy Sheep says you can only eat the least interesting memories. And uh, OP said it's uh, cool to get stuff from other places and um, then later look at it or use it to think, hey, that's the thing I got. You know what, OP, exact, you are exactly correct with that. You are correct. And so thank you for that consideration. Humans send out to be as cultured as flumps and misunderstand the incredible versatility of our flumpy language. <laughs> Fluffy says my party just spent a decade lost in the Feywild. And uh, and DNM wants to abolish the, the flumps. My goodness. My goodness. Uh, so already between the two, we have someone who's on a hunt, ultimately, for perhaps a great demon. Uh, who And by the way, Jedi, I'm, I'm popping your box for first dibs here. Wiggles in horror, says Trust of Flump. <laughs> and now we have uh, we have our gnome here, who who her career actually has been made around a uh, around a, a pendant. And you know what I'm thinking? That so far this dungeon, right? Is if we want to extract information for the dungeon, the dungeon can help uh, give a clue. Or lead to the path of this fiend that uh, savaged Zavadoth. Well, really, specifically his friends, uh, as they were on sort of a, a botany adventure out in the uh, out in the woods. Uh, that happened to be the you know the uh, the back lawn for uh, this archfey. And Fistus is in this because maybe these ruins that were recently discovered match up or provide some relevance to this medallion that is her signature like she found this uh she she found this somewhere maybe she uh caught it like on the cheap in a in a market someone was just trying to sell it for a piece of junk jewelry but she recognized its true value and now here maybe that's what leads the party to the dungeon or even helps them get through the dungeon Uh-oh, Trust of Flump is thinking this is Hecaton. I actually don't know how long it's 
It's going to be in real time. Oh, so time passes uh, at a different rate in the Feywild for you. In all honesty, I did that as well in mine. Um, time passes more quickly in the Feywild than it does in the real. And it passed more slowly in the... Um, it passed more slowly in the uh, Shadowfell. All right, well, let's see what it is real quick here, Jedi. We have our handy-dandy visual guide open, and we'll go to Storm King's Thunder. Uh, we start with a sprite with a spear. So we start tiny, because the fair folk need representation, too. King says, I believe you mean flumps in horror and is not flumping the true sight today. <laughs> My Feywild has Narnia time. After that, um, there's a really cool hat accessory you can give to your adventurers. I recommend it. Every adventurer looks good with one of these on their head. You just trust me on this. Next up, in the uncommons, we have a Gith Zerai monk. Dual wielding daggers. And lastly, is this King Hecaton? Is this King Hecaton? Well, this is up here. The one, the part that you pulled is a giant, does have a sword. Your piece, Jedi, is a fire giant with a great sword. Which piece would you like to keep, Jedi? Yeah, yeah if, so if you want to take the giant Jedi, you could keep it for trade. You know, having a couple different fire giants could be, a, you know, could be good. Trust the Flump does uh, Flump true. You'll keep the fire giant. You can also throw in the dual wielding monk because I have a casting one already. Sure thing. And the pulls continue. And there we go. We're back up to two. Personally, I don't buy any figurines besides that aren't fire giants. Or besides, uh, oh, besides, yeah, gotcha. It's, it's fair. Um, I've been a wheel and dealing flumpin' boy today. So many trades, uh, talks. Reminds me of my MTG game when I spent more time trading than actually playing. 
<sighs> I understand what you're flumping, King. <laughs> yep, Harshnag is being an elusive guy, isn't he? But you know what? He He's out there somewhere. He's out there somewhere, Jedi. Okay, so for 12, I, I presume you want to go first dibs on the, uh, on the Storm King's Thunder. Uh, her amulet, her signature amulet. One SKT, yes siree. Is a literal or metaphorical key to the ruins. And therefore, her wealth and career. Hey! Well then. Yeah, hey, thank you. Thank you for the raid. Uh, we, we raided, uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, so we, we raided you last night and now you're returning the favor. Thank you so much. Oh, all the stormtroopers. I love it. I, I, that's a, that's an awesome emote idea that you came up with there. Yeah. Jedi, uh, he, he did a good job with that emote. Uh, it definitely shows ranks and ranks of us, uh, of, uh, invaders. Great for raids. Oh shoot! I where's my uh? There we go. Oh woo! <laughs> no, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Defeating sign. Yeah, very very good stuff. Well, Jedi. Uh, in in fact, uh, if you want to talk a little bit about your you know your art or your studio, you can certainly provide a link. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a shout out command right now. Um, but, uh, I would urge you all, uh, urge, I would urge you all to go check him out and his streams and his art. Oh my gosh. It is magnificent. And you get good stories and you get, uh, kind of the inside, uh, the inside scoop on, uh, the art world and, and pop culture and whatnot. It's well worth your time. <laughs> well, Hey, uh, you're certainly, you're certainly welcome. Uh, I enjoy my time hanging out with you, um, and and I now appreciate uh, the, your return raid back on us. Uh, so for you and anyone else who's going to hang out for a bit, make yourselves comfy. You're sitting at a table in a game store. We're having a, a chat about, uh, about our characters that we've generated. We're going to pull ideas so that we can go and design a dungeon. Um, you all are going to see some epic MS Paint skills happening in this channel. Um, in a, in a little bit anyway. I want to get a couple of these adventure prompts first from the material we made, and we are popping open boxes of minis. Um, in fact, Trust a Flump has just recently sponsored one, and so I'm going to pop it open, reveal the four random figures inside, and Trust a Flump is going to get to keep uh, his choice of one of the figures in the box. And with the adoption, uh, the shipping's included as well. So my pulse makes me blush even. <laughs> Us pale folk have to stick together. <laughs> He's a vampire. Oh, no. Well, you know, it is, uh, it, these are the, these are the witching hours.
<laughs> and yeah, that that cute Albear. Oh my gosh, Rem Doggington. That that cute Albear. Every time that gets me. Can Flumps become vampires? I guess they'd be uh, like mind drinker vampires from Ravnica, right? So in that sense, because your natural diet, you're already an emotional vampire. <laughs> Flump pyre, says Fluffy Sheep. All right, Mr. Flump, if that is your real name. You are going to start out with a giant frog. And apparently it has active camo, so how about that? An extra feature included at no cost. After that, we're jumping right into the uncommons with a bandit character. They are friendos, yes. Um, oh, I don't have my monster manual open. I'll have to I'll have to get that open at some point here. The bandit looks a lot like Derek. I I suppose, but uh I mean there there is that uh lock of, that that uh shock of ginger hair. Next up you have Ooh. You got a big boy here. Uh you have a stone giant. Hey, you're working on that baseball team. Uh, Flump. And for any of you wondering, the scale. So there's like an average human male, and here's the giant that uh, he pulled. Or lastly, uh, Flump, you have an ultra rare figure in this box. Oh, thank you for the follow. Uh, you know, thank you. You know, we do a lot of RP workshop, uh, kind of a nerds at the table discussions. On Tuesdays, we play D&D, and you can just sit back and watch. You don't need to know the mechanics uh, of D&D if you've never played or maybe it's been a while. If you enjoy a good story and some storytelling, that that's all it takes to enjoy a, a Tuesday game. And the invisible figure that you pulled is the Invisible Bandit Captain. So, you know, it could be a ghost. You could use this on your on your, uh, on your your map to represent a hidden character. Uh, who knows? Or you could just prime it and paint the figure yourself. And for reference, the painted Bandit Captain is this one right here. You never played D&D. &D. Well, uh, so Boopley Quinn, D&D &D is a storytelling game. It's your, it's you, your friends and family sitting at a table and going on an adventure together. And because it is in your, it's in your mind's eye, you have an unlimited special effects budget and, you know, programmers aren't providing, you know, invisible walls. Um, you know, it, your, your imagination sets the tone, the limit, uh, all of the possibilities that you could take on this adventure. Oh, and so uh, Fireflies Glow, same for you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you have friends or family, you know, you go to your friendly local game store. I mean, that's what I do. Uh, I'm, I'm biased because I own one, but... <laughs> um, you know, or you sit down at your, at your uh, kitchen table, you know, your dinner table. It's a great it's a great way to spend time together. No, it's not weird at all. It's worse if the DM crashes. As in like falls asleep. All right, Flump is considering which piece does he want out of this box?
All right, you want to go Higante. Then, oh, hey, here's a little art. I'm not an artist per se, but uh, here's, here's a rendition of a flump. And there we go. So now I know the contents of this box belong to Trust a Flump. Your teacher did that with math problems. Oh yeah, story, uh, story. So storytelling problems. Well, if you want to know what a flump looks like, there you go. You're building your stone giant baseball team slowly but surely. And with that, the cycle continues. Oh, well, thank you, Fireflies. And hey, you know what? I'm not an artist, and I'll tell you, uh, because I'm not, but also because I believe in doing business with those who do business with me, I have been able to commission artists in our community to come up with all kinds of uh, great art assets. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the BTTV emotes we have in our channel... Uh, were created by Coffee Cat Comics. Uh, is Tricy still in here? I I th I see Tricy, uh, but all of these all of these emotes uh, were made by Coffee Cat Comics, and uh, and Coffee Cat has been a, a part of the community for a while now. And you know what? When it came time to start making emotes, I gave them some business. I'm the opposite of an artist. So what, you like consume ideas? Well, I guess that's a flump, isn't it? You like and so Instead of producing ideas, you consume ideas, Fluffy Sheep? Oh, you only see the words? Okay, so yeah, you'd have to have BTTV installed. You might be able to see it then over in the... Um, over in chat here. They're showing up in the on-screen chat. I don't know if that helps out. Um, so, all right, so for those of you who, uh, you know, you say that you haven't played D&D &D or another role-playing game, helps a little. Well, well, we'll just say that there's plenty of talent. If you, um, if you wanted to see more, I run a, uh, a safe for work, like a no worse than PG-13 Discord, and uh, you can see some of the work, uh, whether it's writing or drawing, whether it's traditional or digital. Um, you can see the, the mentoring channels. You can see the inspiration channels. You are welcome to join us there and see, uh, you know, the proof's in the pudding, right? I can tell you we're authentic and that you're getting a, a game store experience here, a nice positive one. But if you don't believe me, go back and look at our history. And, uh, and so, you know, when I, when I have these uh, character sheets on screen, there's a lot of numbers, and you might say, okay, what, what is an arcana? What is thaumaturgy? I don't, I don't get it. Don't worry about that for the, uh, the workshop exercise we're currently doing. Right now, I'm taking a look at the notes of the personalities of each of the characters we've generated so that we can find, we can find commonality between them. Why would they want to work together? And what would lead them to this uh, this dungeon ruin that we're going to be building in the, in the next part of the stream, whenever that will end up being? You have wooden dice, even, defeating sign. Are they, you know, are they like standard size or are they sort of like the big novelty ones for decoration? All right, so let's take a look at, at her personality here. Um, I prefer the company of those who aren't like me, including people of other races. She's an anthropologist. Uh, I would rather observe than meddle. Power. Common people crave strong leadership, and I do my utmost to provide it. Ever since I was a child, I've heard stories about a lost city. 
I aim to find it, learn its secrets, and earn my place in the history books. And I can't sleep except in total darkness is the flaw here. Uh, so let's make a quick little summary of uh, Denderaville Cartwright. Now, uh, Denderaville here is a tiefling, meaning um, a human, or at least born of a human bloodline, that has been intermixed with fiends, you know, uh, dev uh, uh, devils or demons. And so a tiefling is the result. Uh, tieflings are humanoids, about standard human uh, shape and size, though they have tails and horns, and often don't have pupils to their eyes. And they'll also have skin tones like uh, um, dark violets or vivid reds or rust, that kind of a thing. Um, now, as we generated this character, he is 75 years old. And that means that this is, this is probably going to be his last adventure. Is he going to sit at home on a rocking chair and just let the end come? Or is he going to get out there and find clues about his people? And as we've explored through examining the personalities of the other characters that were summarized in these fun facts, um, he might even have come along. Fun fact. Uh, he found evidence that his family is descended from, ooh, from the demon that attacked and slew Zavadoth's friends. This is his last hurrah, one way or another, and he wants to know where he came from before he discovers where He'll go in the afterlife. He is a cleric of the nature domain. So not a druid, not necessarily steeped as an extension of nature, but someone who draws, uh, you know, formal blessings from nature. Um, someone who respects nature uh, in in a more of a divine sense than an uh, existential sense. I don't know if I'm, if I'm kind of painting the difference between clerics of nature and druids. Uh, in that Venn diagram, they do overlap. I guess one one reveres nature, and that's the cleric. One is an aspect of nature, and that's the druid. As a druid can turn into animals and all, all sorts of other fun stuff. Uh, they're on your shelf, said Defeating. Um, standard red paint. Looks plastic because it's coated. Uh, has black ash fade uh, to it. That sounds really cool, Defeating Sign. Gotta go to bed. Defeating Sign, hey, thank you for coming on, uh, over in the raid. Thank you for talking and sharing uh, your, you know, th that story. I'm kind of, I've am i been having fun imagining, uh, you know, like, a, a, like an oversized uh, set of dice made of wood painted red that you were just talking about. Uh, he's obviously going to heroically sacrifice himself. Possibly. And that could be part of the fun in storytelling. You might have the other players at your table as a DM, right? So as a DM, we're, we're producing this, and they're gonna, and you know, they might look and say, "Oh, well, you know, the whoever's piloting this character, well, he and the DM obviously talked, and he's just gonna throw his life away for justice." Not necessarily. In fact, building that anticipation of what will or won't happen, um, whether you talked about it with your dungeon master or not prior, can add a lot of fun tension to things. All right, then lastly, we have the, the character we made last night. Uh, she doesn't have a name yet, so we got to come up with a name. We owe this to her. We brought her into existence. Neutral good, female, halfling. 
barbarian. She's a totem warrior, meaning she she worships uh, animal spirits and draws um, you know uh, draws benefits from them, and even takes on their their mane. Not necessarily as in uh, you know like a lion's mane, like M E I N. And she is an urban bounty hunter. Let's take a look at her personality. The best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. And the first thing I do in a new place is note the locations of everything valuable or where such things could be hidden. Uh, her ideal is redemption. There's a spark of good in everyone. Her bond is someone I loved died because of, mis of a mistake I made that will never happen again. And her flaw is, if there's a plan, I'll forget it. If I don't forget it, I'll ignore it. It's late here, so you're going to go. Thanks for everything. Y yeah, hey, it it's 1 a.m. here. I don't know what time it is for you. Uh, um, Boopley Quinn. I, I like that name. That's fun to say. Uh, it it's sort of like saying flump. Uh, have an awesome night. Thank you for chatting and raiding. Uh, and you know what? Hopefully you you'll come back and you'll visit us again. Jedi Crusader says Janus bite-sized barbarian. She feels guilty even after oh pardon me. A known I, th I think this is what we decided on. Uh, a known murderer in her custody uh, was killed. Prompting her new uh, redemption motivation. She can be easily goaded into dangerous situations um, with a simple but reasonable dare and some coin or a moral currency. Involved. Ivalon, welcome. Great to see you. Ivalon, you were streaming uh, Civilization a little earlier, weren't you? Oh, that's great, Avalon. Have you got to play Heart of Crown at all recently? Ah, oh, very nice. <clears throat> Alright, so if we pull them together... Alas, no, but I should. Yeah, I, I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see a stream a game of that sometime. Now, obviously, you know, your heart has to be in it, especially for a game called Heart of Crown. Um, but I, I know that you really liked it. Call her Kasira. It's a nice name, and it's short in Arabic. So something like uh, Kasira, and she's probably known... Uh, she's probably known as something like Casey on the streets, right? Because she, she has kind of criminal contacts... You know, people who uh, are informants on the street. He's overrunning your your show right now. With his good looks. Oh, is uh, is he showing up on camera? Are you, like, interviewing him or something, uh, Luke? Hello, Spillheart. Welcome, welcome.
Actually, that's kind of a... Uh... Casey the Spillheart, right? Uh, because she has a soft spot for people thinking they can be redeemed. So people call her Casey, but, you know, when she's not looking, they call her Casey the Spillheart. Uh, so we have... Um... This has been fun. I'm going to do some digital painting, but I'll try to make uh, it to a Tuesday stream. Yeah, hey, um, on Tuesday, we we do offer recaps, and on our Discord, you can read a summary adventure or just uh, see links to the YouTube if you want to catch up. I'll tell you, if you if you get to watch what, uh, what happened last Tuesday, that is, uh, I think you'll find a good measure of who we are as role players. It was a very solid session of role play with some combat and a lot of storytelling involved. Uh, so here we'll have... Uh... Ah, all right, so we'll call her Kasira uh, Koskalo. Kasira Koskalo, the, uh, the halfling urban bounty hunter. You're very welcome, Fireflies Glow. And I wish you well in your digital painting. Thank you for spending some time here with us. All right, so pulling together now everything that we've, we've drawn, um, what can we come up with here? Um, th so there are ruins that... Let's just make something up, right? It, it's like art. Just, just paint. Just put something on paper. Work around it. Layer over it. But just get something out there to start. Um, does Kasira kill? Um, no, nah, not if she can help it. If so, Spillheart might have two meanings. She is a bounty hunter, but I think people call her Spillheart because she does have, uh, she's a bit of a bleeding heart. Uh, she, you know, she believes in the redemption of people, no matter how crooked they are, or, you know, even if they blatantly, uh, ran away from the system, she's going to go haul them, uh, you know, go get them and haul them, uh, back. Yeah, she's an urban bounty hunter. So, ruins that... We gotta... Uh, we, designing a dungeon is gonna be so much easier if we come up with history. Why it exists and so forth. And going beyond that, um, what, what, are, what are some clues that we can provide? So, in reading the little uh, summaries, the blurbs about each of the characters we extracted, let's come up with the history. Um... Uh, there was once a mighty temple to a demon lord. The cult that lived there would go into the nearby forest and abduct people for sacrifice. After a time, the Archfey presiding over that forest grew angry and waged war against the demon and its followers. The temple was overrun and none survived. Even the structure itself 
was reclaimed by the forest. Time passed. And the surviving, I guess uh, none of the cultists survived. Um, time passed and the surviving members of the humans forming the cult moved away, carrying the blood of the demon in their... Uh, in their veins. You know, or if we want it to be a little bit more visceral, in their veins and wombs, right? So it's indicating that, you know, they've, they've had contact, that there's, if you want to call it a corruption or an alteration, um, but this is now going to establish that the tiefling started because the humans who took up residence here were worshipping this demon. And, you know, some not-so-PG-13 uh, not so stuff probably happened inside that temple. You can design a dungeon map without history. That is true, Ivalon. After a while, the progeny of the temple village eventually rediscovered the place and word spread Zavadoth receives word from his patron about needing to cleanse the temple again and if possible destroy it this time Fistus hears of the temple and can match its language and markings with her uh, found medallion that could lead into or lead past its entrance. Dendereval a descendant of the demon, far removed, <laughs> arrives with dwarven prospectors to search for clues about his people and the stone working techniques that have led to the temple's um, longevity despite the weather many years and forces of nature trying to tear it apart. Oh, pardon me. Casey. Hmm. The best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. Casey is approached by... Zavadoth. 
Zavadoth. To help him hunt down the man who murdered all his friends. He tells her of the rumored hideout in the forest ruins. And even uh, Slyly tells her that he is all but irredeemable as well as a murderer. Trust the Flump, you're really liking the name uh, Dead Daravel. Um, what was... Hey, Nemi, welcome. So, uh, Dead uh, Daravel, even for a tiefling, I wanted to make it sound like it was a, uh, a more dwarven name. Because he was, uh, he was adopted by dwarves into their culture. Um, and that's kind of what sparked him being an anthropologist. This will hook her into the adventure. Um, Casey has a reputation and wallet to maintain. Zavadoth has a job to do. The Daraval is on his last quest and would like to see his roots before uh before dying. Fistus is here for personal glory and is fine getting help from others who aren't looking to share in the same things as she is. Four of the players died, a an elf rogue, a human paladin, and the twin half-orc brothers. Botu was, bar you mean both? Both were barbarians? Well, what? That was a CR-30 creature you threw at him, right? This paragraph is is putting in our brains. These are things that hopefully our players will accomplish or get a good hint in moving along during the course of this dungeon. Oh, hey, me. All right, I got to get up and stretch. Everyone, let's take a 10-minute break. And when we come back, Let's do some planning in MS Paint, and we can continue in Word also, but let's continue planning and plotting a dungeon, and uh, and how we would like to present it to our players by virtue of, well, what's included in it? You know, why does this room exist? Why does that room exist? So on and so forth. So let's be back in 10 minutes, everyone. I'll have MS Paint open, and we'll go from here. I think we have a strong start, and thank you all so much uh, for your, you know, for being here. Uh, if for any of you who have uh, liked or subscribed or, um, you know, for those of you who have purchased miniatures, uh, you know, you're sponsoring them, giving a good, a good home. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Ten minutes. <laughs> 